when it comes to all of the artificial intelligence and AI and generative fill stuff when it comes to Photoshop. Um, there's a lot of talk, there's a lot of new betas and all that stuff, and this video isn't about that. This is about uh, using AI and something that's in the, the main version of Photoshop. You don't have to download a beta for it using these tools to remove distractions in our photo, which is something one of the most popular tools inside of Photoshop has always been content aware fill. And, and that's computer generated. Now we're just at the next generation of content aware fill and we're able to do it better. So that's what this tutorial is about. And, and I think a lot of times the reason why I did this is because we get to think that this is a very technical process, but I actually believe it's more creative. I believe, you know, by all means, the, the three examples I have for you here, there's thousands of ways that we can use this stuff, but my goal is to get you thinking a little bit more creatively about a technical process um, of removing distractions in your photo. So let's go ahead and jump in. Now, our first image comes to us from Charles Masters. Charles is one of my subscribers and has submitted a photo uh, at one point. So I thought this this made a, a good one because I really, really like the photo. It looks like it was, uh, Charles was doing some type of air to air photography. It looks like uh, I've done this once before. So it's a, it's a ton of fun. You're actually tethered into the back of a plane that's open. Um, and it looks like that's part of the uh, side of the plane or the door or something. So, uh, great photo. I don't think I don't think cropping it's the answer. I don't think you know cropping it in like that's the answer because I think that it brings in you'd have to go too tight against uh, the jet for that. So I think uh, some type of distraction removal concept comes into play here. We'll take the lasso tool and just do a rough lasso area around it, like so. Uh, go to our taskbar, click on generative fill. I'm not gonna type in any prompt, I'm just gonna leave it. And that's what I usually do when I wanna remove something. And I, I want it to just fill it in with uh, whatever uh, whatever it can fill it in with or whatever it wants to fill it in with because it'll usually do a better job than me actually uh, typing something in for those. So you just click generate, wait till it's done. And I, I think it does a, a fantastic job here. Gives you three different uh, versions you can scroll through. So uh, that's one. It's another one. I think three and one look fairly similar. To me, one looks a little better. I'd still probably grab the crop tool, crop in just a hair on the left-hand side. Looks like a little too much space now to me, but better than us having to crop in so close to the wing there. Now, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna delete that layer just, just to show some of you. And by the way, one of the reasons why that works because uh, we know that generative fill will not work on high resolution images, but that background is slightly soft. Um, so that's one of the reasons why it's gonna work so well is because the background is soft, so we don't necessarily need high resolution. And that's when I think you'll find it works best for removing some of those distractions. But another thing we can do here, uh, just, just to alleviate some of the people out there that are gonna say that AI and all that stuff is the devil. So we can always go up here to edit and we can go down to content aware fill inside content aware fill we're able to subtract areas that it can consider for filling with and we're able to use a little brush to go in and add areas to consider filling with and you can see on the right hand side it does a really good job as well so for all of you that hate ai uh, i would say you can just use content aware fill but just understand content aware fill is basically old AI. It's it's still the computer doing the processing and figuring out what to do uh, inside of there for you. So it's you're you're not you're not revolting against AI if you decide to use content aware fill instead of generative fill. Okay, moving on down the line. I thought this was a really good one. This one was submitted to me from Bill Kasky and I I'd normally just say you clip the bird's wings. You're you're, you're done. And while I'm not going to intentionally not worry about clipping wings. Um, I'm always gonna try to leave the photo shoot w without a photo like this. Um, you probably can't go back and shoot this same exact moment again, because it's probably not gonna happen. Um, so it's for those times where you did it and you did it accidentally and there's nothing you can do about it. You know better, but what's that get you? So we're gonna go in there, I'm gonna grab the crop tool and you can see I just I just went and I extended it up toward the top a little bit. Up in the top options bar, you've got generative expand as one of your options. There's transparent content aware fill, which again, we, we could do something similar to this before. It never would have filled in the wings though. And then you've got generative expand here. So I'll click that little checkbox. 
And um, for this photo, it does it does a, a pretty good job of it. It does a better job than I thought it would do. Again, this is gonna be one of those ones where use use sparingly, use it as a last resort because I, I can't guarantee you it's it's gonna work that good on most photos. Now, one of the things it will do is it'll typically leave a little bit of a line in there, okay? Remember, this is generative fill is creating low resolution areas to fill something with. So it'll typically create a little bit of a line and then you'll see even a little bit of a, a pattern up there. Pattern doesn't bother me as much. It, it's you, If you showed this on social media, nobody would ever really see the pattern. If you printed it, most of that pattern would smooth away just like noise tends to smooth away. But we can go to that generative fill layer and as long as what you're filling it with, and in this case it is, is blurry. Again, that's that's one of the keys to learning how to use this effectively. If you're trying to generate high resolution things, we're just not there yet. But in this case, it's blurry. So we'll get away with it from a detail perspective. We still have that pattern, but we can go filter, blur, Gaussian blur, come in here and hit it with maybe a three or four pixel blur. And it does a good job of getting rid of uh, that little pattern back there. Uh, might need to add a little bit of noise to it as well. So we could always go in there to uh, let's just go jump under there to filter. Uh, let's go down to noise and let's go to add noise. And we'll bring this way, way down. Quite a bit down. Let's see what we come up with here. So yeah, we're getting down in that quarter of a percent area where it does add a decent amount of noise up there just to make it blend a little bit better. Now, if you wanted to clean that up a little bit, what you could do is click on that top layer and then merge all these layers into one brand new layer. So it's Command Option Shift E on Mac or Control Alt Shift E on a PC. And then use some of your distraction removal tools. The remove tool is a good one. Uh, so that one might work to get in there and get rid of that line and blend those areas together. So you might have to spend a few minutes with it. Again, just depends how much the photo is worth saving for you. So if it's a really interesting opportunity that you missed, it might be worth it. Uh, another thing that you can also do is go down to the patch tool and make a rough selection with the patch tool. And then again, just drag that upward and that should do a nice job of blending those areas together. So you would do the same thing over here those together. So with a little bit of work, a little bit of creativity from some of the other tools, if you have a photo that is absolutely amazing and you cut off part of the bird's wing, I'll admit this one I think is a little bit of a Hail Mary, but it can, it can definitely get you there. Now, also one of the things is in the Photoshop beta, because I just want to call attention to this, in the, the latest beta for Photoshop, which is available for everybody to download in your Creative Cloud app, the latest beta also has generative expand, but what they have is a new feature that is enhanced detail. So it'll let you enhance the detail in the areas that you expand. Um, I, I haven't found it to work really good yet. So feel free to give it a try. I, I included it in here because I, I, I feel like somebody's going to ask about it. Uh, it is meant to enhance that detail, make it uh, look a little bit more, uh, a little bit sharper, but I, I just have yet to, to find an example where I can even see much of a difference between the before and after for it. Real quick, if you are into this Photoshop AI stuff for a photographer, okay, again, you wanna use these tools to better your photography, not necessarily create fake images or, or make images for you. Um, I've got a course called Real World Photoshop AI, and it's exactly that. It's using Photoshop's AI tools in the real world for a photographer. So everything from the neural filters to some of the AI-based selections and how to use those, how they work both in the, the raw editor and inside of Photoshop. And then of course, Generative Fill has so many uses for a photographer just looking to help a specific area of a photo. So I encourage you to swing by, check out the course, it's on sale now. And it's uh, been a very popular one because it really does break down those AI tools into a very real world way. Now onto our last example here. If you ever uncomfortably crop, uh, mostly in camera, the, the top of the photo in the sky, this can be a really good use for generative fill too. So head over here to the crop tool, look up in the top options bar. We've actually had content aware up there for the crop tool for, for years. And, and that could do it. You could turn on content aware and you could extend that crop and hit the little checkbox up there. Sometimes it'll do a good job. Sometimes it'll leave these little weird artifacts and 
this little weirdness up there, which you could try to adjust with uh, the uh, with any of the retouching tools. But I'll undo that one, and you're just going to get better results from using generative expand here. So we'll go ahead and uh, again, I'll just crop around the entire photo here, grab that top handle, move it up a bit like that, hit the checkbox, and again because generative fill doesn't do highly detailed fills and areas but because the sky is typically not going to be a very highly detailed area with a lot of texture to it, you'll get away with quite a bit up there. And, and in most cases, uh, in the last example, you saw we had to fiddle around with some of the pattern and the noise. And I find in the sky, you could use some of those same techniques if you had to, but I find a lot of times you don't even have to with the sky that it usually looks okay. But most times that, that I've done it, it does a much better job and you can scroll through a couple of different examples here. It does a much better job than using content aware did there. Again, for those of you that are just against all AI, if you've ever used content aware, fill or crop like I just did here, you've been using computer generated technology to do these things and to remove your distractions. Um, since all of these things came out, we just now have better tools to do it with. They're better and faster in, in just about every way. Uh, also, if you're interested in AI based selections, so these are just selections that, that happen better and faster for you. Uh, I've got another video that might be worth watching next that kind of goes into a little bit of the differences between some of the tools that might see the same or seem the same, but you'll actually see some differences in them.